Enhance your experience by becoming a supporting member. Gain access to unseen videos and video requests. Three day free trial by visiting zionmembership.com. Chosen ones and perps. This may or may not apply to you, right? But being involved with a narcissist in your life, um, when all's been said and done, you've gone east, they've gone west. There can be a number of things that you feel guilty about. Or maybe guilt's not the right word, but um, you feel like you may have acted in a way that wasn't suitable. Um, how else can I describe it? Yeah, guilt, feeling like you acted in a way that wasn't suitable. Basically, um not being in your best version of yourself, you know, the the version of yourself, your authentic self, not being your best version. And the thing is, is um, these narcissists that are involved in your life are master manipulators, right? And there's something called reactive abuse. And what they do is they antagonize you, they provoke you, right? They really get under your skin. And the moment you react to them, right, and your reaction could just be speaking your truth, speaking your mind, speaking your heart, they victimize themselves and play the victim role and make out that you're the abuser. Now, this can occur, right? And the thing is, this may have occurred numerous times throughout the relationship with the narcissist involved in your life. This may have occurred numerous times and you're left with the feelings of incidences where you feel like you done wrong, you know? And I've touched on this briefly in um, re recent videos about, um, on this subject, on what I'm about to say now, um, I touched on how you may have come out of your character, you know? You may have come out of character, your... And... It was actually down to them provoking you and antagonizing you, you see. But um, this reactive abuse is very, very a horrible thing to, that they do because they, um, they victimize themselves just based on your reaction and they class you as the abuser as if you've done something wrong, you see. But they... D but, all of their abuse, all of their and um, antagonizing, trying to get under your skin, that's brushed under the carpet. And then you're just left standing there like you're the problem. So what I, what, what I made this video for is because I don't want any of you to be feeling guilty, to be ruminating about um, things that you've done or did and be feeling like you're to blame, you know. You were dealing with a parasite. You were dealing with someone who was actually trying to bring the worst out of you. You know, they, they enjoyed bringing the worst out of you. Um, so, for instance, you might have lost your temper on, on a given day. You might have lost your temper with the narcissist that was involved in your life and you started speaking your truths or, you, you know, you lost your temper and they immediately victimized themselves. And then after in the aftermath, you know, um, perhaps even now you're 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 feeling guil guilty about you losing your temper or coming out of your character, coming out of your authentic self. And the thing is, is they know you have such a big heart. They they're fully aware that you have such a big heart, and they know that making you be self-destructive, if that's the right word I can use to describe this, um, putting something. Putting throwing something in the mix like that you're the problem, that you're the abuser, and leaving you with that thought to fester, then putting you through a discard or a reverse discard, and then leaving that thought to th fester, um, can consume a chosen one and an empath because they have big hearts. You have a big heart. You see, chosen ones and empaths have big hearts. So you start analyzing the situation like you're in the wrong. When this was a deliberate sabotage, it was a deliberate sabotage by the narcissist involved in your life. Um, 
that deliberately antagonized you, deliberately tried to bring out the worst version of you, deliberately got underneath your skin, deliberately annoyed you, you know, to make you react, you know. So please be aware of this, that times that you feel guilt or you feel remorse, look, some of you might not feel guilty about nothing, you know, and this video might not be relevant for you. But some of you might feel like that f certain times during the relationship when you're involved with this narcissist in your life. And like I always say, this doesn't just have to be romantic relationships. It can be friendships, family members, colleagues, associates. Um, you know, they they could have made you feel like you you done something wrong to them. And it consumes you, you know, even if the relationship's all been said and done a long time ago or, or, or some time ago. And you still have the rumination about things you've done wrong. I want you to analyze these things um, with this information that I've given in this video and see that it was strategically done. You know, they, they, they're victimizing themselves. They're very good at playing the victim. They're very good at playing the victim. They love playing the victim role, you know, and one of the main reasons why they play the victim role is it's their way of counteracting your truth, you see. On a given day, you could have spoke your truths, voiced your mind, heart and soul, you know. And if you were dealing with someone who's authentic or genuine and true, they would have relayed back to you what they agreed with or what they disagreed with. Whereas the narcissist that's involved in your life immediately goes into victim mode, playing the victim. You know, and I don't want any of you to get confused, right, with this information. Like I'm like, uh, for example, you being a victim of narcissistic abuse. I'm not trying to say that you're victimizing yourself or anything like that. Right. I want to make that crystal clear. This is deliberate attacks by the narcissist involved in your life that makes you feel guilt makes you feel remorse makes you feel like you've done wrong makes you feel makes you analyze yourself in the wrong way this is the reactive abuse they're basically gauging your reaction and victimizing themselves off your reaction when all your reaction was was speaking your truths perhaps you your tone changed um perhaps you lost your temper a little bit but things like anger are natural, you know, feeling angry when you're when you're if you're putting up with the narcissist involved in your life, you're putting up with abuse day in and day out. It's natural for you to get angry or frustrated or things of that nature, you know, but what it, what happens when you do lose your temper or you do speak your truth or you or you do become a bit more vocal is they they completely shut you off and go into victim mode. And play the victim very well. And then they know that you've got this big heart. You're going to start analysing the situation. You're going to blame yourself. Right? And this can stick with you for a long period of time. You know? You need to be aware of this. This can be stick, stick with you for a long period of time. And it's going to take a lot of inner work and inner soul searching. For you to finally realise that you actually wasn't in the wrong. You know? I really don't want any of you to feel guilt about things that occurred. Especially because you can't change what's happened now. And you don't need to be the one that tries to repair the situation neither. You know, all you did on these given times, right, that where this reactive abuse occurred was you said or done what you felt was necessary at that point in time. And all they did, not all they did, but what they did is gauge your reaction and victimize themselves off your reaction that's basically what reactive abuse is you know um it's a very very manipulative tactic that they use you know it's very manipulative and they know that you've got a big heart they know it's gonna hurt you you know so i don't want any of you self-blaming blaming yourself this is blame shifting you know, this is blame shifting at its finest, you know. They're, they're at fault 
they've done something wrong. They're not being true. They're not being transparent. They're not being honest. They're not being loving, you know, and they flip the dynamics around and make it out that you're the problem. It's blame shifting, you know. They make it out that you're the problem. You're the antagonist. You're the one when they was antagonizing you the whole time. When they was provoking you the whole time to get some to get a reaction from you, they wanted that reaction. They wanted that reaction. Remember, I heard this somewhere that narcissists that are involved in your life actually thrive on negative supply more than positive supply. You see, they wanted that reaction from you. They wanted a negative reaction, or they wanted you to lose your temper, or they wanted you to get frustrated. They they wanted this from you. And then, you know, a long time could have gone by and you're still eating yourself up about something that happened. You Maybe not completely. You're aware they're narcissists that are involved in your life. You're aware of that. But there's still maybe some things that eat away at you where you feel guilt or remorse or um, feeling like you've done wrong. You know, you, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. You know, you were dealing with abuse day in and day out. Day in and day out, you was dealing with abuse from this narcissist involved in your life. And you stayed composed for a long time. And if on these given times you lost your temper a little bit or you got frustrated or you shouted or um, you spoke your truths, you know, and they tried to victimize themselves over that. That is reactive abuse, basically. You know, your reaction, they, they, they twist it, they twist it around and victimize themselves. And make out they're the victim. And can have everyone believing that they're the victim. When really they're the antagonist. They were the one that was provoking you. They were the one that was deliberately provoking you. And antagonizing you. To get this reaction from you. You know. Because they wanted to the supply. They're completely f deranged. You know. They're completely, completely deranged. You know. But please, please, please. Don't. Don't tear yourself apart. About things you've done or things you said in the heat of the moment. You might have said some things. Basically, what I touched on in recent videos is about them making you come out of your character. You see, this is basically what they've done in these instances. You know, you losing your temper, you you becoming, you, you saying something that you, you know, or, you know, things, it's not in your nature to be like that. But they, they deliberately um, wanted to get this response from you. They wanted to get this reaction from you so they could play the victim role. That's their way of counteracting your truth. This could have been about situations that were very important at the time. And you were merely speaking your truth and vocalizing your points. And all they did is play the victim role, you know, and focus on the way you said it or focus on. Um, the way you expressed yourself or focused on the, you know, um, you might have swore or you might have, you know, they, 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 and then played the victim so well and had you feeling guilt about something you did or said when really it was actually 100% truth what you were saying, you know. It's their, way of, it's their way of controlling you. It's their way of controlling you. And... When this happens through a long period of time, it basically makes you become uh, resistant to, if that's the right description, um, resistant to actually speaking your truths in your heart and your mind and your soul. You see, you'll be reluctant. That's a better description. You'll be reluctant to speak your heart, mind and soul because every time you do speak your heart, mind and soul, you're penalized for it, you know? They make out they're the victim. They make out that you're the abuser. Um, and you'll be very reluctant to speak your heart, mind and soul. So hopefully you're free from this narcissist that was involved in your life now. And please don't let any of this eat you up. Um, you feeling guilt. You feeling bad about things you did or said or done. Um, they provoked you. They antagonized you. And they deliberately wanted this reaction from you. They did. Right. But... Um, don't feed into it no more. Don't give them no supply any longer. Make sure that they're cut off. Door slam bolt and hold it shut. You know, don't explain yourself. Don't explain the, you know, because you've heard this video. Don't explain yourself. 
you, you don't need to do none of that, you know. This video is for you, for you to reflect if you want to reflect. Not ruminate, but reflect on what happened and situations that happened. And for you to be able to get clarity from these certain situations that happened and realize that they were deliberately antagonizing you, deliberately trying to spark a reaction from you. And this is reactive abuse at its finest, you know, blame shifting, basically. So um, if you want to know more about st how you stayed firmly fixed in the narcissist's mind, click this video here and I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.